All right, so I'm in the shop today, and I'm going to make a video. This is just a uh, lead-free 360 reflow. So this is just to uh, do a basic reflow. This slim here is RGH'd, was on the land center, and would randomly freeze. I've got uh, a couple more that are doing basically the same thing. One's an E74 that needs to be reflowed. Now, a lot of videos you'll see people using these and, and using the front panel and all this crap. The only thing I do here, I set the uh, bottom heater since I'm doing a slim and 270 should be fine for the bottom heat. And you see it's a pretty good distance from the heating plate so I'm not gonna overheat it or anything um, but I have the serial adapter connected the serial plug and I actually use the computer program to run the machine instead of using the front panel because the front panel buttons are really hard to push and you just click the run slash stop button you got this nice graph that watches the temperatures for you the curve that was there was from a PS3 reflow and the air temperature in here got really bad and that's why it was all crooked and weird like that I have to close this door here I am in a functioning store that is open right now, so occasionally it gets loud. And right now, I run for five minutes on the bottom heater to let the bottom heater heat up. So the top heat, you can see this is uh, this is the top heat, and it changes a lot slower right now because I'm only heating with the bottom. Once the top heater kicks on, that'll start to start to rise a lot more quickly. Hopefully, I don't blow those capacitors. This machine, if it dies, it dies. It's not going to... I already have plenty to put in the land center. This one's just already ready to go, and I'd like to just get it running again and stick it back up there. I've already got my glitch chip over here ready to be put back in it. And I'm not going to be putting the uh, bolts in it. I'm going to use the X clamp again. I think I am going to slide this guy down a little bit more. Get out of the way of those capacitors. Now when this does get hot, I got you lost. Thanks. Probably won't be able to see on the camera when the solder melts. But I will. You see the top? It's getting a little bit hotter. 
And it reads from this, uh, maybe you can't see it, maybe you can. This little temperature sensor I have on the board. And you can see the flux is starting to bubble a little bit from the heat. We're about up to 215, 217 on the bottom. Now before, I was hitting about 150 on the top before it went to step two. But the air temperature, room temperature has changed again with the weather and it probably it's probably all screwed up and I'll need to readjust again, but this should still get to a uh, melting point for the solder. It's just going to, yeah, see, I only got up to 90 before it switched that time. And I'm also a little concerned that this board's going to warp too much for me. The only way to really change that is to give it more bottom heat, and I'm afraid it's not going to be quick enough. If it stays where it is right there, it will bounce back, but that doesn't necessarily mean it'll still work. And I do have a mount for it. I should have put it on the mount, but I didn't. This value will be going up to 160 and then it will hold for 75 seconds. Target temperature here is 220. Melting point of lead free solder is 217. But I'm actually reading the temperature off the board, so just to be safe, you want to go a little bit over that. It looks like the top, the bottom heat helped with the the board warping. It's starting to, well, it's sort of just staying where it was, not going any further. You can see my pattern. It curves up pretty good here, but we've got some problems right in here, and I can see I can see the problem right here on the front panel. I need to cut the second 
dwell time down so it doesn't stay as long on 160 and, and does a steady rise. The goal here is to get it into a steady rise up to the temperature and then you cut it. That's why the curve is drops at the end because I just cut it with the fans and it cools fast. So this will take it up to 220 and then hold for 85 seconds. And I have the red kill switch. Once I hit my target, I don't I don't let it run the program. I kill it if it hits the target before the program ends because I'm not going to try and kill the board just to see what my curve looks like. 220 is the, the max that I want to go on this green number here. And I'll, I'll visually look at the solder balls. The flux should, should uh, evaporate away and I'll see the uh, melted solder balls. Looks like we're getting right about there. I don't like that it keeps doing that. I must be must be getting a breeze from something. What the hell? There we go. And we're done. I got way too high of a temperature. Cut the fans on. And you can see it rapidly drop. And you definitely can't see the solder balls, but I watched them all around the edges melt. So there you have it. It's a 360 lead-free reflow.